Before you watch this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to Social Media Gemini TV and do not forget to press the notification button and to get more information. Well, we are back with the latest updated of Aze News and here they are. United Nations presses Myanmar Junta for aid access. The United Nations Secretary General urges Myanmar ruling military to allow humanitarian aid access and address the desperate needs of its people, highlighting a year since the coup ended the decade of democracy and plunged the country into turmoil. Myanmar's military government could not be reached for comment. And, and ASEAN uh, foreign ministers are indeed doing that. The junta has vowed not to bow to international pressure and has been highly critical of the United Nations, accusing its envoys of bias and interference. Of the military. And therefore, there has to be... Hack says Myanmar's special envoy, Noelin Hazer, had been engaging all stakeholders in the Myanmar crisis and would work with the ASEAN, which is leading the diplomatic effort in the country. The military. So let's see how far we can go. Have a great evening. United Nations expert says Myanmar's military is committing crime against humanity since school. The United Nations human rights experts of Myanmar says Myanmar's ruling junta has murdered and tortured civilians while waging a campaign of terror in the year since taking power on February 1st coup. Tom Andrews, a former United States congressman serving in the independent post, in a written statement says that he had received more reports of mass killing attacks on hospitals and humanitarian targets and the bombing and burning of villages in recent months. A spokesman for Junta did not respond to calls seeking comment. The United States, Britain and Canada imposed new sanctions on Myanmar's military after a year of chaos. Andrew calls again for the United Nations Security Council to impose a comprehensive arms embargo on Myanmar. On, uh, sorry, on Myanmar. The United Nations Human Rights Office says at least 1,500 people are known to have been killed in a year-long protest against the coup, with thousands more possibly killed in the armed conflict. Meanwhile, United Nations Human Rights Spokesperson Ravina Shamdasani says at least 11,787 people were unlawfully detained in Myanmar in that period, including 8,792 who remain in custody. Aung San Suu Kyi appeared in court to hear the corruption case against her. Myanmar's ousted leader, Aung San Suu Kyi, is to appear in court on charges of corruption over the leasing and purchase of a helicopter while in office and other cases against her that supporters fear could see her tied up in legal proceedings for years. Nobel laureate Suu Kyi is on trial for nearly a dozen cases that carry combined maximum sentences of more than 100 years in prison. She has been sentenced to a total of six years in detention so far and denies all charges. Suu Kyi's supporters say the cases against her are baseless and designed to end her political career and tie her up in legal proceedings while the military consolidates power. <laughs> Myanmar has been in turmoil since the 2021 February 1st coup against Suu Kyi's democratically elected government, led to widespread protest and raised international concern about the end of tentative political reforms following decades of military rule. King of Cambodia attends the opening ceremony of the upcoming 2022 Winter Olympics and strengthens bilateral relations with China. Cambodian King Norodom Sihamoni arrives in Beijing to attend the upcoming opening ceremony of the 2022 Winter Olympics and relevant activities. China and Cambodia enjoy ironclad friendship while co-building a community with a shared future. They are good neighbors and sincere friends who went through thick and thin and shared wheel and woo. According to the Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesperson, at least 32 foreign heads of the state, heads of government, 
members of the royal family and heads of international organizations attend the opening ceremony at the national stadium, also known as the Bird's Nest. The Beijing Olympic Winter Games officially roll out since opening ceremony, with the sporting competitions running through to February 20. It will be followed by the Paralympics from March 4 to 13, 2022. Bali welcomes its first international tourist flight after lockdown because of the pandemic. Indonesia's holiday island of Bali welcomed its first direct flight, carrying foreign tourists for nearly two years with just a handful of visitors on board who entered a strict quarantine on arrival. A Garuda Indonesia flight from Tokyo landed in Bali in the afternoon with six Japanese and six Indonesians on board. Though the island officially opened to visitors from China, New Zealand, Japan and few other countries in mid-October 2021. The six foreign tourists were traveling using business visas since the new rules for tourists were not ready when they applied to come. Indonesia said restarting international flights is intended to boost the Bali's better tourism sector, which usually accounts for 54% of its economy. <laughs> The entire country recorded just 1.6 million foreign visitors last year, down 61.57% from 2020. Vaccinated tourists to Bali must quarantine between 5 and 7 days at hotels or vessels offshore. Bali's slow reopening comes as Indonesia has been seeing a steady increase in COVID-19 cases, primarily driven by the Omicron variant. Indonesia will tighten social restrictions to contain the spike in coronavirus. A senior cabinet minister says Indonesia will tighten social restrictions in Jakarta and Bali, as well as in two other cities of Java Island, in a bid to contain a spike in coronavirus infections. He adds, under the new regulations, supermarkets, malls and restaurants will operate at 60% capacity, while the capacity of houses of warships will be reduced to 50%. Long queues of vehicles were also sighted at the COVID-19 drive-through testing center in Jakarta as the Omicron variant continued to drive up infections in Indonesia. Meanwhile, the transport ministry clarified that overseas tourists will still be able to enter the country through the capital Jakarta after the ministry indicated otherwise in a statement issued. The ministry in a new statement clarifies tourists with the right paperwork could arrive through Jakarta and Bali airports as well as via Batam and Tanjung Pinang in the Riau Islands near Singapore. The Southeast Asian country has seen a jump in cases driven by the Omicron variant with more than 36,000 infections. Malaysia starts inoculating children aged 5 to 11 against COVID-19. Malaysia kicks off a COVID-19 mass vaccination program for children aged between 5 and 11 in a bid to protect some of the youngest members of its population. In the vaccination center in the capital Kuala Lumpur, young kids sat nervously with their parents as occasional yelps of pain could be heard echoing in the hall. According to the local media which quoted Health Ministry, Kairi Jamaluddin, about 517,000 children have been registered to take the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine. In addition, Malaysia Health Ministry says that in the past six months, 147,282 children aged between 5 to 12 had contracted COVID-19, while the total number of deaths across all ages was 26. The inoculation program is expected to boost the Southeast Asian country's vaccination rates. Nearly 80% of Malaysia's population has received at least two doses of COVID-19 vaccine, including almost 98% of adults. Former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir allows to go home but still receiving hospital treatment. Dan 
His office says former Malaysian Prime Minister Mahathir Mohamad, who served for more than two decades in the top job, continues to undergo treatment at the National Heart Institute but has been allowed to go to his home. He adds in a statement, Mahathir has been permitted to return and go back to the hospital for physiotherapy and further treatment. He has been advised not to receive visitors. Seeing walking slowly in a video message, Mahathir said he had not recovered entirely. He had to go back to the hospital in the evenings after spending the day at home, as he still has to undergo certain procedures. Mahathir, who is still an active lawmaker, was readmitted to hospital for treatment after undergoing an elective medical procedure on January 8. The National Heart Institute did not say at the time what procedure Mahathir, who has a history of heart problems, has undergone. Philippine presidential candidate starts campaign on February 8. The Philippines presidential election campaign will kick off on February 8, 2022 with the retired boxing champion, late dictator's son, Vice President, Manila Mayor and former police chief among the contenders. Many Pacquiao 43 has vowed to jail corrupt officials and has criticized Duterte's close relationship with China. He has launched a campaign to provide free housing to 1.9 million poor families. The only man to hold world titles in eight different divisions, Pacquiao retired from boxing in September 2021 to run for president. He is a senator who served two terms as congressman. Pacquiao was until recently one of Duterte's staunchest supporters, backing his war on drugs and efforts to restore the death penalty, but their relationship has become strained. The Philippines will hold an election on May 9, 2022 to choose a successor to President Rodrigo Duterte, who is ending his single six-year term. Voters will also to select a vice president. China welcomes more countries to join Global Development Initiative. A spokesman for the Chinese Foreign Ministry in Beijing says China welcomes more countries to join the Global Development Initiative to implement the United Nations 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Chinese President Xi Jinping proposes the initiative in steering global development toward a new stage of balanced, coordinated and inclusive growth on September 21, 2021. At a regular press briefing, Zhao says, since the initiative was put forward, the international community has responded positively and participated actively. Nearly 100 countries and the United Nations and other international organizations have expressed support for the initiative. He affirms China welcomes the active support and participation of all parties interested in accelerating the implementation of the 2030 Agenda. China is ready to work with other parties to draw international attention to development issues and special difficulties of developing countries. And that's the whole news for today. Thanks for watching. Thank you as well, Julius Post World Drop Collection. Stay safe, stay healthy, and enjoy your weekend.